Hey, everybody, it is that time, time for Let's Talk College Football. Nothing but college football as we break down action coming up for October the 29th, 2016. We'll have my five picks later on and how I did on my five picks the previous week. And, of course, the good, bad, and the ugly for college football in general. That's on the way, too. But first, we begin every Let's Talk College Football show with a segment known as Big 12, Thumbs Up, Thumbs Down. First of all, thumbs up, big thumbs up to the West Virginia Mountaineers. They're now in the top 10, and they continue. They continue to show improvement. And when we think of the Mountaineers in the past, we've thought of offense. But this year's Mountaineer defense is definitely proven that they're worthy of headliners as well. And they held the high-octane TCU Horned Frog offense to no points in the second half and only 10 points and one touchdown for the entire game. West Virginia cruises past the Horned Frogs 34-10. to also, we got to give thumbs up to Baker Mayfield going against his old team, Texas Tech. And all Mayfield did was throw for 500 yards as well as a school record, seven touchdowns, and OU's win over Texas Tech. But even though his team lost, I'm going to give a thumbs up, too, to Pat Mahomes of Texas Tech, who I thought played one hell of a game. And, by the way, threw for over 700 yards in the uh, loss to the Sooners and had 85 yards rushing. His 819 total yards FBS record for one game. Unbelievable. So congrats to Pat Mahomes. Even though his team lost, he did everything he could to try to get Tech into the winner's column on Saturday. They just fell short, but not because of Pat Mahomes. But that will lead us to thumbs down. Okay, This will lead to a huge, huge thumbs down because we got to talk about just how bad Oklahoma and Texas Tech's defense were on Saturday. Um, it was an absolute uh, train wreck to watch. I mean, to see what those defensive coordinators put up, which wasn't much at all, yeah, over 1,700 combined yards sacrificed in this game, an FBS record for futility. Or I guess you could say it was an NCAA success for both offenses, but the defenses simply put couldn't tackle, couldn't cover anybody, and seemed to get worse as the game went along. So thumbs down to the Tech and Oklahoma defenses. All right, let's go now to good, bad, and the ugly. We'll limit it to one team uh, per section. The good, the Penn State special teams. And, you know, I've given Penn State a hard time, and rightfully so, because of the scandal that, of course, rock college football. We don't have to get into the details of that. But that scandal has nothing to do with the 2016 Penn State and the Lions players or coaches, okay? They had nothing to do with it. And this past Saturday, they whited out um, Beaver Stadium at State College, PA, over 100,000. And I'm telling you what, they made it a difficult environment for Ohio State to play in. And it was a blocked field goal in the end, returned for a touchdown. And it turned out to be one of the big differences in the game of Penn State's upset win over previous number two, Ohio State, so a huge win for the Nitty Lions, and James Franklin needed a big win to feel a little bit better about his job security. The bad Houston Cougars, already their second loss of the season. Yeah, so much for a college football playoff bid for those guys after their opening season win over Oklahoma. Yeah, they got to number six in the country, but, of course, they've lost the Navy, and now they lose to SMU? What, what the hell is going on? And the game wasn't even close. And... As if that wasn't enough for the Cougars to have a bad week. Earlier in the week, they found out that the Big 12 is not going to expand. So any thoughts of Houston joining a major conference, uh, that was flushed down the toilet with that decision by the Big 12. So a bad week for Houston in more ways than one. The ugly, I'm going to give it to Arkansas. Okay, I knew that they were an underdog playing a red-hot Auburn team. Okay, One thing to lose to the Tigers on the road. But to go to Jordan-Hare Stadium... Lose 56 to 3. I thought Arkansas was supposed to have a pretty good defense. I mean, what the hell is going on in Fayetteville? Brent Bielema's team has gone downhill. It's been a disaster of an October for his squad. And the worst part about that game, it looked like Arkansas just flat out quit in that second half. It looked like they had no fight at all. So, ugly this week definitely goes to the Hogs, who I expected more from after the good September that they had. All right, let's go ahead and review my five picks from a week ago. Well, West Virginia didn't let me down. I had them covering against TCU. That was an easy cover. And also, too, I thought Arizona State would be competitive with Washington State. It was a late Saturday game, and they were. I mean, Sun Devils lost, but they were uh, getting points in this game. And 
Arizona State ended up covering despite the loss, so good for me. So two wins there, but then I lost uh, three other games. The worst pick I've ever had in my entire life. I had Army covering a huge spread of about 15 or 16 points against uh, North Texas. Not only did Army not cover, but Army got waxed. You know, see if I ever pick Army again in the ball game. And Nebraska and Navy Thomas, look, you were right, okay? I, I did not know that Nebraska was as banged up as they were entering that game with the Boilermakers. Yeah, Nebraska won, but they were a humongous favorite and did not even come close to covering. So Navy Thomas, you were right. And I had OU covering the double-digit spread against Texas Tech, and we know that OU won, but won by a mere uh, touchdown, mere seven points. So OU doesn't cover, so I'm a loser. So two wins, three losses this past week, and for the season, yeah, I dip a little bit more under 500, 16 wins and 19 defeats. But that's in the past. Let's focus on the present, everybody. Here are my five games for this week to wrap up the show. Game number one, West Virginia. Hey, they've been good for me the past two weeks. I've been winning with them. I'm going to stick with them playing at Oklahoma State. I know the Cowboys take homecoming seriously. It's a huge event in Stillwater, more so than a lot of schools. It is an 11 a.m. kickoff, though. I think West Virginia continues to show the country that, hey, they're for real. They've got a lot more to play for in this game than the Cowboys do. So give me West Virginia minus the three and a half. Clemson at Florida State. Uh, the line has jumped up to four points. And just like you know West Virginia does in their game, I think Clemson's got more to play for in this one than Florida State, even though I know the Seminoles are playing a little bit better now after suffering two early season defeats. Clemson still undefeated. Clemson trying to you know, withstand Louisville and win the Atlantic Division. Um, but if they lose, that doesn't help matters at all. Even though the game's in Tallahassee, I look for Clemson to get the W on the road and cover with those four points. World's largest outdoor cocktail party, Jacksonville, Florida. That can only mean one thing. A lot of drinking. <laughs> oh, but it could mean football, too. Georgia, first-year head coach Kirby Smart, and they're going through growing pains. Even though it is a large um, spread for a game of this magnitude, I think seven and a half points. I think Florida, with their terrific defense, is going to make an impact in this game. And again, Georgia still on that learning curve under Kirby Smart. So give me uh, the Florida Gators minus the seven and a half. Going back to the Big 12, you got Texas Tech against TCU. I think the Horned Frogs show that they're a better offense than what they displayed in Morgantown, West Virginia, uh, last week with that 10 point performance. I look for them to score quite a bit against a Tech defense that might be the worst in the country. Uh, Give me TCU at home minus the nine over the Red Raiders. And finally, Ohio State. This line opened at 21 and a half against Northwestern. Buckeyes now are favored by 27 points. I think Ohio State covers the spread. Normally, you know, taking a spread that big and giving that many points is never a good idea if you are taking one side or the other. In this case, though, I think Ohio State knows that even though they lost to Penn State, they didn't really drop that far in the polls. Did you notice that? They went from two to eight in the coaches' poll, I think, and from two to six in the AP poll. Hey, that's not bad at all. And I think that they'll show the country this week that, hey, it was just a hiccup that past week and not a sign of things to come. Northwestern is playing better ball than they did in September, but now the competition gets very tough. And I think once Ohio State gets points early, I think they'll get them often against the Wildcats. So give me Ohio State minus the 27. So those are my five picks for this week. Just a reminder, my post game of Oklahoma versus Kansas. Uh, like I really need a post game, but we'll have one anyway. Probably going to be late Saturday, if not early Sunday. So please check it out. Thanks for watching. Let's talk college football. See you next time.